I got this radiation detector called um, Better Geiger, uh, Better Geiger counter, sent to me. Uh, a guy asked me if I would be willing to do some some tests. So I'm just gonna kind of show what I've got here. I am not a videographer, so I apologize for the glare and everything else. But um, it's a kind of a multifunction uh, detector here and it got an LED looks like display reads out in microsieverts per hour comes with a nice little waterproof container and it's like you get a, a sticker and a little radiation risk cheat sheet looks like it gives you the dose rate in one column in microsieverts per hour and then the total dose you would receive in, in microsieverts if you spent different amounts of time in that in that dose rate and then that equates that to a dose or looks like chance of death and radiation sickness uh, so that's kind of cool and then it's like an instruction manual and then I thought this was nice it, it comes with also a little little exempt quantity radiation source that I am guessing I didn't could have done an isotopic identification on this but I'm guessing it's probably um, uranium ore. I haven't opened it up, but that's kind of cool because what you can do is is um, test your Geiger counter, which is a nice thing to be able to do. Uh, I've been playing with this. I have a lot of radioactive material at work, so I've been testing it. And what I want to do is just do some tests on it, but not everybody has a radiation source handy, so that's kind of a nice thing. Um, what I'm going to do is I am going to, I've got this this little jig here that that he sent me and it's got different readings on it, a little pin that that I can put in here um, that is basically designed, the idea with the pin is I put this in here and I can stop it at different uh, you know, different centimeter distances from the source. I gave him the dimension of my little source capsules. And the problem with that is I'm going to do some, some testing with about 100, almost 102 millicuries of cesium. And so that's going to read about 350-ish MR per hour at a foot, which is, you know, I'll be a little further than that away, but uh, about 50 R per hour at one inch. So I'm guessing I'll also set a uh, little tape measure down here. And what I'm what I'm imagining is the center line of the detector is probably right in here about where this radiation trifoil is. And so as I move to the you know to the center of where my source capsules will be, that would be about you know that right there is probably roughly one inch or um, or so away from the actual source. And we'll just kind of see what it reads, but at, at one inch, uh, we'd be about 50 R per hour with the sources that I'm gonna use here. So that's about 830 MR per minute or about 15 MR per second. So I'm gonna try to move kind of quick when I do this and kind of stand far away. So I don't wanna be messing with this little pin and trying to figure things out. So I'm gonna try to set this up and and uh, get my sources out and I may be talking kind of quick when we actually go through this. So we'll be back in a minute with some sources. Okay, I have this set up now. I've got my cesium-137 out. I've got about 101 millicuries of cesium-137. I'm trying to stand back. Um, my whole body is back away from this. So here we are roughly at, I would say, about six inches right here. And I apologize, the refresh rate's gonna be different on, so we get some flashing that you're seeing on the video that I'm not seeing in, in real life here, but about 40,000 uh, microsieverts per hour as we kind of move in a little bit. I'll kind of try to stop this. I don't want to spend a lot of time here. So that's at about four inches right there. I'll let that kind of settle out. 
So they call this, a, it says it's a better Geiger counter, but it's actually a, a scintillator, which is kind of cool because a lot of times a scintillator won't, won't read up this high. So we're at about 70,000 right there, give or take. So if we move in, that's probably about two and a half inches, I'm gonna say. And so we're at 83,000, 86, 88,000. I hope the glare isn't too bad. It looks like I'm looking at my phone as I'm, so I'm trying to keep myself back at about 50 MR per hour as I do this for my whole body is. Um, so that's certainly going up. I'm just gonna go ahead and just to save time here for me. I'm standing back where I can barely read that, but looks like we're 75,000. So about seven rem or so. so. So that's about as close as we can get. Okay. going to see if I could get this to overrange and it's not looking like it so that's that's kind of cool um, you know I, I think that's certainly more than a person would need I'm standing back about 15 or 20 feet as I'm talking um, but that's uh, that's pretty impressive so I, that's again nobody should ever be around oh it just looks like it said it's overrange so we're right right at about that overrange uh, dose rate there. So that's, that's, uh, like I said, that's pretty impressive. That's, um, at a much higher dose rate than somebody would want to, to be spending their time in. So uh, cool, cool detector. Um, I like, it's very inexpensive, which I think is cool. Um, the only, the only thing I say I don't like, and it's probably something that can be changed. I haven't messed around with a lot of the buttonology on this thing, but um, I prefer it to read out in the traditional U.S. units. I'm very familiar with sieverts and micro sieverts because I do a lot of international work and everybody else in the world <laughs> uses those units except us. But I prefer, you know, I, my whole career has been spent using a traditional unit, so I would prefer that in the U.S. But regardless, it, it um, certainly works and is really good at, at indicating what the, the dose rate is and um, uh, kind of a cool, cool instrument. So I'm gonna go ahead and end it now so that I can get these cesium-137 sources put back into their uh, lead container. All right, so we're back here. I got the cesium-137 put back into its little hidey hole. So our dose rate's back down a little closer to normal, I guess. So that worked out pretty cool. Uh, it looked like it maxed out at about 62,000 or so um, micro sieverts per hour, which would be about 6.2 uh, rem. So um, that's pretty, again, pretty good. Um, I guess to, to quote Anatoly Dietlov, you know, uh, not, not great, not terrible. <laughs> so I think that, that in the Chernobyl miniseries, the the instruments they had read up to 3.6 runkins or renkin per hour, so that'd be about equal to, uh, you know, 3.6 rem per hour, and this one went up to 6.2. So definitely, like I said, would be good uh, for just, it reads down into the uh, real low background level and then goes clear up into what would be really a, a dangerous dose rate and an area where you'd never want to spend time. So just. Uh, the way I had this set up, I had a, an ion chamber that I had kind of set back where I was, where I was at. I was wearing a, let me just see, a, a PRD to just to kind of see what my dose was. So my, it looks like my total dose for that evolution and kind of messing around with the sources was about 3.28 uh, MR. So not, not terrible, um, kind of to... Um, mess with these sources and 
kind of get an idea what this um, detector was was capable of. So again, I you know I haven't I haven't played with it to see all the different functions and what you can do. But as far as as far as I'm concerned, this is a, a neat little very inexpensive. I mean, you know, this ion chamber that I got is you know a couple thousand dollars. Um, you know, the, the this PRD that I've got. Uh, I don't know which I've got so many of these, but th this one, you know, I mean, they're well over a thousand. So definitely uh, a good inexpensive, inexpensive radiation detector. And I look forward to kind of playing with it a little more and uh, messing with all the different buttonology and seeing what it's completely capable of. So thanks for watching.